This is how you know somebody lives on a boat when there's bug spray, duct tape, none of this stuff was staged by the way, an empty box of cookies and an empty Nutella container. <laughs> what happened to the Nutella? Had to clean up the box too. Have to clean up everything. Yeah, he had to clean the winches and the Nutella container. Snack bars. A bag of zip ties, some heavy duty cleaner. What else? Rubbing alcohol with a bunch of goop and glue. Oh, we got this. Um, it's like a, it's like a special camera where you can run the cable through hidden places. And we got this new fan. We're excited about. I don't know how long it's going to be standing up. surgery <laughs> so we've got this situation which uh, always <clears throat> makes me feel a little unsettled but Stefan is doing some winches Doing some winches. When you love it, you don't look at the time. <laughs> Taking it apart, degreasing, regrease, put some oil, put it back together. We have uh, seven winches. And so this is number one. Number one. And how many hours have you been working on it? Like I said, when you love it, you don't count. <laughs> so he's saying he loves it, I guess. I don't know. Oh, goodness. So Stefan refused to continue working to clean the rest of his winches unless he had chocolate. So I had to walk down the street and get him some chocolate. <laughs> He's shaking his head. But now his hands are dirty, so I have to hand feed him chocolate now. <laughs> Don't laugh, it's when? true. <laughs> you have to eat the whole thing. <laughs> mm. Good job. <laughs> You should not have to beg for it when you're doing dirty work on the boat. Oh, I'm doing dirty work too because I have to clean up your dirty mess from working. Hey, look at how shiny. It's like jewelry. Mm. I'm really excited to report that my fridge now works. They replaced the thermostat, which we thought maybe needed to be done and can. So that was last August. So now the fridge is sporting a new thermostat. Um, it's not original. It's not the original. It's like after the fact. Hang on, Stefan's like talking in the background because he thinks he has better information than me. <laughs> so I have a rent. This fridge, Isotherm, which is owned by Webasto, is like in so many different brands of boat. When you off, our fridge has been working as a freezer almost from day one. So imagine it's been a long time. And then you find out that all these fridges have the same problem. And basically the thermostat, they create some condensation and then it rust and the thermostat doesn't work anymore. So technicians in the islands, when they see this, they say, oh yeah, we know the problem we've told Webasto and Isotherm drill two holes so it creates air circulation and if there is water it will drain. So we tried that first but then just to be sure like uh, uh, Quentin who is like a specialist for fridge basically say I'm going to use my own thermostat so it's not like a Webasto and Isotherm and it's working wonderfully. Mm -hmm. So but it's crazy that it's known to be a, it's a known problem. The company knows about it. They do nothing about it. And when you contact them, they don't even bother replying to you. Yeah, Stefan's right. So it got to the point where they wouldn't even respond to Utremir. So I had to send it. And it's, it's not just Utremir's, it's many boats. They use systems from different manufacturers that are kind of standard on 
many boats. So you would think that they would just want to fix the problem and not deal with all the customer complaints. They're not dealing with it because they're not answering. <laughs> and at some point it was like, well, we'll send you a well, not web store. I mean, it was like, well, we'll send you a new fridge. But there was no problem with the fridge. It was a thermostat all along. So it should have been addressed months ago. So anyway, that's just one topic on the boat. We have many others. The other thing we had checked out this week was a couple hatches. And if you guys watched our um, All Together Voyage series, you saw on the leg one, was it leg one? Yeah, leg one we discovered water ingress, but we couldn't identify where it was coming from. In leg two, Seglin identified that it was coming from the, the hatch in the bathroom. And also in leg two, you saw Nikki be a total stud and like completely epoxy the thing shut um, for our Atlantic passage. So once we got to Martinique the first time, they took off the hatch and um, peeled it away and realized that the seal wasn't very good. So um, the thing we did is we had them check out the other windows. So this one here in the shower, and then if you look across on the other hole, that, that one there. So the weird sort of chicken or egg thing that happened was we got here and we knew that they were gonna look at the windows, but when we got here, they didn't have the windows. There was this weird circular thing where like, they weren't gonna, like send the windows until the team here took the windows out and determined that they were faulty. And then they were gonna send the windows. And the issue is when you take the windows out, they typically bend or break. And then the team here didn't wanna take the windows out because it was raining. And they don't wanna take out windows and have a hole in your boat when it's raining without replacement windows. But they know if you remove the window and if you have enough seeker, you're going to have to bend it or break it. And people in an office are like... I thought you were only going to have one rant for today. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe today it's, it's two. Okay. It depends, if you, depends what topics you're bringing up. Okay, I better, I better close yeah. my mouth. Who came by the dock as I was doing the teak and he said, um, this is the difference between a man and a woman doing boat jobs and I said what and he said a woman will put plastic down the guy doesn't give it <laughs> looks like Stefan's working over here hmm? oh working hard on your snacks <laughs> this morning we were gonna leave and go to st. Vis Vincent or maybe st. Lucia depending on how quick we got there and we were headed to the fuel dock and we were gonna get fuel and then we were going to check out. And we got out of our dock space and we had a little trifecta problem. So we just left the dock after being here a couple weeks to get some warranty work done. And we had to immediately anchor because um, our engine, one of our engines didn't, doesn't work. So Stefan's down checking out if there's any growth underneath. So Stefan thinks he, sound, he found the source of the problem. It's sea water. It's, oh, it sucks seawater and it's not sucking. So the thing is, so he cut the, he cut the, this little. The problem is, yeah, the tube was not uh, sealed. In. I guess what you describe as trifecta is we had the engine not doing an official service, but we had Nani uh, looking at our uh, replacing our alternator belts and replacing another part that was a recall for the bolt for the uh, starter. Um, so that was done. I mentioned that the pulley on the starboard engine uh, below the impeller was resting. So the logic was there was a seawater leak. So I had checked myself this before I saw no leak and I mentioned it. He checked. The problem is the tube wasn't sealed anymore, so we had to cut this little piece off. And it wasn't sucking uh, seawater in. The irony is 
we had the nanny engine guy come and service the engines. What did he do? Oh, he changed the alternator belt, sorry. But you would think he would look at stuff. But um, what happens this morning is somebody was very nice as we were leaving, so there was like 10 minutes maybe. Uh, it says you have no water and uh, coming out of your starboard engine. And the first thing is, I guess the traffic that was, yeah, was not spotted while there wasn't any technician in there, but I guess they cannot spot everything. Two, I cleaned the sea uh, raw water filter uh, on both engines. So I closed the cell drive valve, removed the basket, clean it, put it back, reopen the, the, the valve for the cell drive so the seawater can come in. I did this correctly on the uh, port engine. For whatever reason, I forgot to um, reopen it on the starboard engine. So that was uh, my meeting, my mistake. The third, I guess, uh, of the trifecta called by Ollie was... Uh, I forgot to check that water was coming out. And um, so yeah, check. There was a lot going on at the dock and we were trying to get the lines off. So um, I didn't check. And so here we are was uh, she started the engines and every time we look for water coming out. Um, this time we didn't. And, and then so it ran for 10 minutes. The good thing is we were not putting any uh, RPMs in this one. We needed the, the port engine uh, to fight the wind. So it looks like we found the problem. So we found this piece, which seems to match an impeller. So need to replace the impeller looks like yeah so that means right now we're just anchored with uh, some chain um, so we need to find a place to anchor you put the bridle settle down for today so we got help from this wonderful person named Jan who's a skipper because he's he he stopped and I asked us oh because he's from Ren and uh, he's helping us uh, look at our impeller now, so super nice. Hello. Hi. I love sailors, they're awesome. So this is the old impeller and it's just chewed. So we're gonna check and see if it works. Okay, so I want jumping for joy. Uh, okay, well, the only thing we, there's a piece and a half. We don't quite know where it went, so okay. crossing our fingers. Okay. Just looking at the flow to see. Uh, so we had a little part, black part of the impeller. You saw it? No. Uh, it was really small, but we have one little one left. That came out? Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, what's going on over here? <sighs> Drinking water from the engine room. It's so delicious. So, a water maker is a desalator. I'm talking to uh, the Salator. Uh, they mentioned that um, we can um, set up a parker valve. And the reason for that, so the water pumps some salt water, push it through the pump, push it through the membranes, and it fills up our water tank. If our water tanks were ever to be contaminated for whatever reason, I mean, we can drink from it. We have a Seagull filter, carbon filter. But if we didn't trust the water for whatever reason, now we have a way to basically get water. I mean, we will get a big jug of water, fill this up. Maybe we'll need to get a longer tube. But I can basically turn this valve here. Which valve? Um, I'll show you. So now the water coming out of the water maker before it goes to the water tank is coming here. So we can fill jugs. So 
yeah, if we have any concern, um, so that's fresh water right out of the water maker. It's like um, drinking milk out of we a cow. We have a new filter, right? <laughs> milk out of a cow. <laughs> the reason, so what the salator explained to us, if you put a regular three-way valve, where on one side the water goes to your tank, you turn it off, turn it on, and it goes to like a, 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 a tube where you can uh, fill up your water jug. Then you have an increase in pressure as you go in between. So it's not recommended, it's not good. So there's uh, this valve here over there, it's called a Parker valve. So what happens is right now it's in a position where it just makes water and goes to the tank, but when we flip it, to fill up the jug, we do this, and the beauty of it, it continues, there is no pressure increase, it continues to make water as normal, but it, it reroutes some of the water to fill up your jug. So there is no pressure increase. So it's called a Parker valve. That's what uh, we got installed. The idea was like, uh, I mean, as long as you stay in the Caribbean, there are many options to get water, but maybe one day um, we have an issue in the Pacific, and so that was kind of a, a little, backup uh, to bypass the tanks and still be able to drink water. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Cheers. So, and if there's anything we've learned in since 2020, since we started sailing, is a plan isn't a plan until you're actually doing it, until you're executing a plan. And so, in the end, Everything worked out, no damage. We had a spare impeller. We ended up meeting this super nice guy from Brittany, <laughs> from Rennes, where I come from, uh, Jan. And um, he ended up like staying. We had lunch, and uh, he made that whole experience super, super nice because he's been working on boats. And, uh, and so we worked on this together. So now we found a new friend, and, and uh, definitely thank you so much for your help, Jan. The day didn't go as expected at all because we're supposed to be by like at St. Lucia at least by now. Um, but we did make a new friend and we learned how to change our impellers. So that's also a good upside. Um, and we gave ourselves a couple days. Um, so it's good, we wasted the day, but we still have a couple days to get to Tobago mm. and to keep doing um, hops. Yeah. And so we still have a bit of a cushion, so that's good. And still have a cushion to go to Trinidad, but I think it's a good reminder to give yourself time. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Do you want to show us our plan to get to Trinidad? Oh, I thought you were working on that. Well, I was working on the weather. You, you were working on the oh. routing. Okay, so what's our plan? Our plan, so we need to be in Trinidad for haul out by July 3rd. Right now it's mid-June. We were trying to go to Tobago as soon as possible, but there is strong current going this way, two knots of current. So we kind of uh, decided to take hot steps. So today we were planning to end up in the south of St. Lucia, so that didn't it's happen. Yeah, today we were planning to be south of St. Lucia to make another hop. So what we're going to do tomorrow, um, we cannot leave at daylight because we ended up not getting fuel and not checking out. So we're going to be first thing in the morning, eight o'clock. We'll try to make it it's about 73 nautical miles-ish, 70 plus, to get all the way to St. Vincent. So we're going to try to do that and spend one night here. Uh, and then we'll see. Either we'll try to go to Tobago or we'll spend another night to go to maybe a Union Island or something. And, uh, or if we stop in St. Lucia, so we'll do this. And then the current goes this way, the current goes this way. So we're going to try while, well, but the wind goes also. So it's a compromise between the wind direction and uh, not facing too much current. Uh, so we'll try to end up in Tobago uh, from one of those islands and head this way. Then the plan will be to stay in Tobago until end of June. Then that will be because the, the winds come this way, the current comes this way, so that'll be an easy sail to Trinidad. Uh, so we'll do this early July, spend an anchor here, go there uh, last minute to go for a out on July 3rd. So that's our plan for the next two weeks. <laughs>